What's up, Impact Wrestling fans? BQ here. It is official, like a ref with a whistle, Laurel Van Ness has been granted her release from Impact Wrestling. If you've been following the channel for several months now, I had uh, dropped the knowledge on you guys that this would, um, this would be her last set of tapings and that she was going to drop the title at the tapings and then peace out by. So lots of really mixed reactions with this. Um, I, I can't say that Impact did her wrong necessarily. Her character was very organic. You know, it wasn't supposed to go to the level that it did as a drunk bride, but it did. And she was involved with a really big angle. And I really, at first when she was like daddy's girl, I thought that character was kind of vanilla to be honest with you. Like I wasn't really, I wasn't really digging it. Um, I've never really been a huge fan of her, her like mic skills, which is crazy. Cause like her interviews and everything is like, she's really well-spoken, but for some reason, like when she's like Chelsea green talking like promo wise, not really my favorite thing in the world. So I think this character was really good for it. Where Impact probably held her back a little bit. And we, gosh, how many, how many of us fans have been talking about this? Like there was no progression in the character. There was, um, there was some progression, you know, they brought Kongo Kong on and then she started kind of like, she kind of was going the direction of the Hardys where the Hardys started like mainly Matt towards the end started like getting funny and trying to be comedy and humor. And the drunk bride could have been cooler as more of a, like a, a psychotic character. You know what I mean? Um, instead of, uh, instead of like comedy and there were several months there, uh, with like a couple set of tapings in a row where they just didn't go anywhere with it. You know, when she did wrestle, she usually jobbed out fairly quickly. Um, there was just no growth. She was in the crowd and then she did the, uh, you know, the angle at, um, bound for glory, with uh, Grado and everything. I guess I was supposed to be the payoff. I mean, the, the storyline with Grado was kind of cool for a second and then it didn't really go anywhere, you know, because she was normal and then she snapped again. I mean, there was so much they really could have done with this. They could have gone a lot of directions and they kind of didn't and maybe it happened a little bit too late. But fast forward to now, they start taking her a little ser more seriously. She They uh, put the knockouts title on her and then she requests her release. So this is where a lot of people are upset because if she had the desire to be released, you know, she probably would have, uh, you know, she probably should have communicated that a little sooner so that where they wouldn't have put the title on her because it really devalued the title in the eyes of us wrestling fans. Someone gets the knockouts title, which is supposed to be prestigious and it, and it's, you know, you could argue it's probably the most prestigious company. I mean, a title in the company because of what it's meant to women's wrestling and all the great matches that have happened. Um, it devalues it in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I, I still value it, but I'm just saying outside looking in, it looks like, okay, thanks. I don't want this title. It would have been one thing if she won the title, she was going to request a release. And then she's like, you know what? I'm the champ. I'm going to ride this string out thing out to the summer when um, my contract expires. Obviously, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to realize that WWE was probably in her ear for a little while, especially through her boyfriend. But let's be realistic. Someone's been in her ear and you don't, you don't just, it's kind of different with like EC3 and Lashley where um, th that sucked too, but they kind of did everything they could do. Yes. They dropped the ball on EC3 there a little bit towards the end. Um, let's be real. But there wasn't a whole lot of reason to bring him on necessarily. Like, Laura was still pretty young in the company. She's probably one of the best women's wrestlers in the world. We just didn't get an opportunity to see it like we would have liked to, like we deserve to. If you uh, didn't watch Victory Road Knockouts Knockdown, she had a match with Rachel Ellering, which was excellent. Um, she wasn't the drunk bride at the time. I think she was on TV, but for, <laughs> for the purpose of the pay-per-view, she was, she was normal Laurel. And... um I kind of felt like something was going on a few months ago when her Twitter handle changed to I'm Chelsea Green instead of Impact LVN. And even though on Impact, they kept putting out Impact LVN, she changed it to Chelsea Green. So I think she had a lot of friends in the company. I mean, Mackenzie Mitchell, I guess, is her best friend. Um, she seemed to like being there. She never had anything you know, bad to say. So I was talking, uh, shout out to Ken. We were talking on Facebook. And uh, 
I guess she she really got mixed reactions from the crowd with the set of tapings because they knew she was going, so she was getting some pretty legitimate heat. And she I guess she broke character twice, uh, yelling at fans and and everything. Um, they were giving her a pretty hard time, uh, making a lot of Zack Ryder references, um, giving her a hard time for not wanting to be there anymore. So, as I've said previously. People join the wrestling industry to join the WWE, and that's just the bottom line. We have to, we have to accept that. We want people to stick around longer. We really, truly do, but that's the nature of the beast. If you're someone who doesn't watch the Eve and you prefer Impact, refer, prefer uh, Ring of Honor, that's the nature of the beast. It's going to be a revolving door. It's something we just kind of have to suck it up and take it, but there's, there's professional ways of doing it and like not professional ways. You, you know what I'm saying? So, um, wasn't a really fan of the big fan of the Mike Bennett exit. And I'm not a huge fan of this one either, but uh, the same token, you know, kind of went out with dignity, you know, did the set of tapings and, and dropped the title. But this is another person. Now impact has to be careful with this folks. This is in the last two years, three years. This is the, uh, I'll say it last two full years that I can think of um, another champion to either request their release or be holding the title um, at the end when their contract is up. I'm talking about the Hardys. I'm talking about Drew Galloway. I'm tra- talking about Bobby Roode. I'm talking about Eric Young. Um, you could even argue EC3 to an extent um, and Laurel Van Ness. I mean, this is, this is bananas. This is something that cannot happen. If someone's not going to stick around, don't put the damn title on them. So let me know what you think about Laurel Van Ness in the comments. Um, I, I, I think it's pretty clear we know where she's going to end up. Again, there's she definitely had people in her ear. Not an expert by any means. I'm not in the room. I'm not a fly in the wall. But common sense kind of dictates. Talk to you guys later. Peace.